Hi, my name's Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand forex technical analysis. If you're new to the video, welcome and if you're returning, welcome back. Just want to say again, thank you for all the lovely comments I've been receiving, you know, on YouTube and in emails, um, you know, really appreciate the, uh, the feedback. And uh, thank you. I will continue to uh, provide high quality content. And if you're again, if you're new, um, we have the um, pairs timestamped in the description box below, as well as some other links as well. So um, we'll start off on the fundamentals for this week. As we know, fundamentals and really sentiment are drivers of price, and we can derive value from fundamentals. Um, so uh, anyone who says that fundamentals don't work doesn't know how to trade the fundamentals and doesn't really understand about risk sentiment. And if you do want to understand about fundamentals and risk sentiment in the way that I trade, um, then in the link in the description box below, I have a fundamental and sentiment analysis course. I go through uh, 14 videos here. And you can just click on the videos, choose the one that you want to um, go over. And uh, also I have a fundamental analysis spreadsheet. And in this, I just give my view on um, the currency that I'm either bullish, uh, bearish on, varying degrees of strength. This is where I derive fundamental analysis, where I derive my, um, get my data from, and where I get my sentiment. Some of the sources I get my sentiment analysis from in the last update, which is today. Um, what this doesn't take into account though, is um, is sentiment. It's all to do with uh, fundamental analysis. And if you don't understand risk on and risk off sentiment, again, You'll discover that in the course. Um, it's free, by the way, as well. Um, so uh, all it takes is just a bit of time and you can go through it and uh, you should be uh, benefit from really how to trade fundamental analysis. So last week, um, you know, uh, we had um, a bit of uh, risk, what well, a bit of, but risk off kind of dissipated a little bit. And um, you know, the week before, I think it was Trump, you know, it was a full blown trade war. Um, Trump increased tariffs um, on uh, Chinese goods um, coming into the country within the next uh, couple of weeks. And then last week, um, he kind of, you know, downplayed it, um, soothed the market's fears uh, by calling the rift with China a squabble. So, um, you know, the market has uh, kind of eased a little bit. Stock market's gone up a little bit as, as well. Um, and the risk off currencies like the yen and the Swiss franc really have looked like bargain prices as long as, you know, the uh, risk tends to be less off. Um, it's risk on and risk off isn't necessarily like a light switch. Um, you have varying degrees and it depends on what the market is focused on. But again, that's all, you know, in the uh, fundamental analysis course. Now this week and a week ahead, we have um, minutes from the Federal Reserve, the Reserve Bank of Australia and the European Central Bank. Um, definitely um, a uh, potential mover. Uh, I think the RBA are, are expected to be very dovish, even though uh, prices for the Australian dollar have been falling, and especially as well with the ECB as well. I think they're probably going to end up being dovish if they don't get the inflation that they want, inflation targets. Um, anyway, alongside US durable goods orders, housing data and flash market PMIs, UK inflation and retail trade, um, Eurozone flash consumer confident and market PMIs, Germany business morale and Japan first quarter GDP, that's going to be quite important. Um, growth, trade, balance, inflation. Yep. So Japan is a big, big week. I think this is going to be a big week in general um, in the next week or two, because you've also got to add on to that the European elections. So uh, 2019 European elections. Um, if you're not, if you're watching this and you're not in Europe, this is a big deal. Um, where all the countries basically. Um, in Europe, get to uh, they're voting on the parties that are going to represent them, and the, the the talk is that you're going to get a lot of anti-Europe um, parties in. You know, will vote in on what takes place and certain votes within the European Union as the uh, one of the uh, Brexit parties is leading the polls. So it's not looking good, you know, for Europe as a whole. Um, I've been short the euro for a while and uh, i think it's not going to probably get any better but again we don't know for sure but the consensus is it's probably going to be uh, a lot of uncertainty around european elections and if there are a lot of uh, anti-establishment and anti-europe parties actually you know getting a seat at the table then it doesn't look good for 
Europe as a whole. So I think the next few weeks is going to be very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. So anyways, let's move on to the technical analysis. And we start off as we normally do on the Dow Jones dollar index. And the Dow Jones dollar index is a measure of dollar strength against a basket of the major currencies like the pound, the yen, and the euro, as well as the Australian dollar. So this was last week's analysis and we came down to this demand zone. Um, I've been you know, bullish on the dollar for, for a very long time. So I'm just looking for buying opportunities and we don't necessarily buy the Dow Jones dollar index. We just look for strength at levels and uh, see uh, when, when what we do is we um, look for, um, if it starts to, you know, start to turn bullish, then we look for buy trades on the other dollar crosses um, like the dollar yen, dollar Swiss and etc. at, you know, certain supply and demand zones. So this was well, from last week, prices came down here and I was looking at, you know, prices either holding here or, you know, taking a bit of a dip and then looking to probably buy. And as we can see this week, dollar index has strengthened. So if we go to the, you know, price chart and we look to update the chart at the moment, um, pretty much we're at the top of this supply zone right here. So what we can do if you're looking to short the um, the dollar then now would be the time you'd be looking for short trades on any of the dollar crosses yeah um, that creates a nice demand zone because we look for proof of value um, you know the concept that I teach is proof of value not drop based rally rally based drop this is proven to be a bargain area why because you can see that prices have made new highs buyers have piled in so this is proof of a bargain area um, this was proof of a bargain area in the past um, but for this currency pair or this currency index, I'm looking to uh, look for probably pullbacks into, um, you know, some sort of demand zone. Um, if it pulls back all the way into that demand zone, then fine. If it makes a new high, then I'll be looking for a pullback into a newly created demand zone before looking to probably get long on the dollar. I am long on a few pairs anyway. Um, uh, so this just really just adds to those, uh, those long dollar trades. So, um, that's pretty much it for this week on the on the dollar index. You're just looking for dollar strength for maybe some pullbacks into certain levels. Um, moving on to the dollar yen. Dollar yen this week, as we've seen, uh, there was risk off um, last week. So uh, the, the the yen strengthens from a risk off environment. You know, safe haven plays. Um, I was saying that if this level doesn't work, then this is going to be the, you know, the 109 level is going to be the level to look for buy trades. Um, and again, there was some risk off sentiment. And as you know, I'm in this trade, got in this trade from around the 109 to three level. And so did uh, many of the traders that I mentor as well, saw the entry and now we're up. So far looking to probably ride this if we can, if risk stays less off. Um, and I think the dollar should really want to strengthen, especially with the euro um, looking to probably weaken and even the pound, you know, some Brexit sentiment um, that came into the market with the uh, talks really breaking down. So uh, I think the dollar is uh, is probably going to be the king against the yen. It may not be so simply because there are risk events coming on. So you could see the uh, the yen also strengthen as well doesn't mean it is a strong currency overall but just um, from safe haven plays but it's a good level to get long in we're up you know i think two to one at the moment targets are going to be up here this is going to be more of a long longer term you know hold um so decent risk reward on that trade if you are looking to potentially get long on the dollar let's go to the chart you'd be looking at um probably more of a pullback and let's update this more of a pullback into this into this demand zone if we can get it before looking at again long trades long trades if you are looking for short trades I think now would probably be the time all right where well you've got a supply zone right there so you'd be waiting for the dollar index to look for sell trades you know to sell off and then you'd be looking to short if not then you're looking at a short trade up at this zone 
would be the first zone right there. You'd be looking for any kind of short trades. Moving on to the dollar Swiss and the dollar Swiss. I was looking at buying around this uh, demand zone around here, but we just didn't quite get prices come down to that level when we've uh, we've turned around on um, some dollar strength and uh, less risk off, I guess. Um, so again, if we're looking at the charts, we're looking at dollar Swiss. If we're looking to get long, we'd be looking for prices to really kind of pull back to this level here, or what you're looking for is a bit of a pullback new highs proof of value and then prices to really come back into this area of newly created demand before looking to get long if you are looking to get short then you'll be looking at prices really coming all the way up to here before looking at any kind of short trades um just looking at maybe some other confluences uh now i think that's about it for now but still looking to get long in this currency pair moving on to the Dollar uh, CAD, dollar CAD. Um, the CAD has been um, uh, strong as of late, you know. So against the dollar, it really hasn't gone anywhere. It's kind of bounced in between this demand and supply zone. And this is what happens when you have two competing currencies. When it comes to strength, you tend to get, uh, say, so you tend to, well, you, yeah, you should get um, uh, ranging markets. Trending markets are caused by a strong versus a weak currency. Um, so uh, yeah, we're pretty much in this. You know, in this, in this range, and uh, going to the charts um, again. If we're looking at any kind of you know short trades there, but just being you know be be mindful that uh, the more level is touched, the the, the 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 weaker it becomes. So this level of supply has touched a couple of times. So um, can you expect it to really hold? And in fact, again, I'm a buyer of really the dollar, so I'm looking for. Um, uh, really pullbacks to this fresher area of demand before looking at long trades but if you do want to take advantage of maybe some dollar weakness um, then uh, this is probably going to be the area to look for some sort of uh, weakness uh, on the dollar and buying the Canadian dollar as well look for oil to be uh, to, to strengthen when buying the Canadian dollar moving on to the New Zealand dollar US dollar and so far we've had I was really waiting for price to really kind of come up to a higher zone before looking at um, any short trades but this week we just didn't get any you know came close but didn't get anything um, and uh, yeah so we've uh, sold off um, the New Zealand Reserve Bank of New Zealand is dovish on their statement and the uh, the US dollar is um, neutral really the best currency so you'll see them pretty much you know a sell-off happens so if we're looking at any kind of trades right now if you're looking to buy the New Zealand dollar now is um, a decent zone to be fair to try and look for long trades we've also got a bit of a demand zone around here demand uh, I do from a technical level this demand zone is very nice nice fresh area for various reasons a bit of a breakout CPR zone as well a nice nice long trade there um, if I was looking to get long but because we are looking to get short on this um, really your next short trade and again this isn't financial advice this is just what I'm uh, looking at these will probably be the levels that I'd be looking at getting short on I'm going to delete some of this just to clear up some of these higher levels don't really need all of this now not for now anyway and if we do then I'll just uh, I'll start to add it add it on um, but yeah these are probably the supply zones the immediate supply zones to look for potential you know uh, short trades um, within these areas just zoom down into a lower time frame and look for um, potential short trades if you're looking for long trades now is you know really the time I do like this from a technical perspective just not from a fundamental but if the dollar starts to sell off then potentially we could have a nice buy trade at the moment nice bargain area pound dollar and uh, there was a demand zone here but um, 
I was saying to a, a, a few traders that I'm not looking to buy. I think I said last week, matter of fact, as well. You can check out that video. I'm not looking to be a buyer of the uh, the pound against the dollar. And we've had some, again, negative Brexit sentiment, as mentioned before. We've talks breaking down between the Conservative and Labour government. So uh, without a deal being on the table, um, then um, it, it causes some more uncertainty, sentiment, negative sentiment towards the pound. And you've really seen it this week pound has pretty much sold off right so uh, fundamentally it's um, it's one of the best um, of the uh, when you compare it you know to the euro and, and, and Japanese yen etc you know it's the, the, the British economy is actually in very good standing but it's just negative sentiment has uh, caused this Brexit sentiment has caused prices to really sell off but what the sentiment do it uh, brings prices to where we want to be buyers so um, I'll be a buyer of the pound, not against necessarily the, uh, the the dollar, but against other pairs when sentiment starts to uh, um, when sentiment risk off sentiment starts to change. So got a bit of a, a wide zone, wide demand zone coming in. In fact, I think I'm gonna just add all that as demand for various reasons. Demand rather than putting other zones but this whole area of, is, is an area of demand and uh, we also have some confluence and when you have wide areas of demand what you can do is add the uh, support and resistance confluence some horizontal support and resistance within that area so I think those zones right now potential buy trades if the dollar starts to weaken and the pound starts to strengthen, you know, you probably got some, may have some profit taking going on um, at some point. Markets don't go down forever. So uh, if we take advantage of not necessarily a reversal, but maybe some sort of profit taking, that would be the first area. Second area is going to be at this level, this 1.26 uh, round number, just below that. If you're looking to be a buyer of the dollar, which means you're going to be short in this currency pair think yeah that's going to be the area right here all the way up here and we got supply zones um, so we're looking for really a pullback the move is really gone but if we do get maybe a bullish candle yeah or and I'll just clear these out of the way and this is probably in for the next coming weeks if you're looking to get short you'd be looking for a bullish candle then a new low so that'd be proof of value and that would create a supply zone in this area here or you're looking for higher highs higher lows so you're looking for a move up and then you're looking for move like this bit complex but then move down then move back up to that supply zone before looking at getting short um, don't know whether that's gonna happen this week but um, in the next coming weeks that would be how we would plan out you know shorting this currency pair moving on to the euro dollar and finally managed to get a short missed out on this one um price had pretty much gone a few weeks back and uh managed to get short on this as well uh this was a trade that i called um on youtube on the first of may so you can check out the uh, cpr zone um uh, trade as well um, and watch that video so we managed to get in short around here and now we're looking at you know targets around this demand zone and probably beyond the uh, the demand zone simply because Europe is going through their elections and a lot of uncertainty should cause the euro to weaken and the, uh, the dollar as long as everything remains fairly neutral to strengthen so um, that's what we'll be looking at but um, if you are looking to take advantage, obviously I could be wrong. Um, anything can happen in the markets. It's just a game of probabilities. But if you do want to, you know, take advantage of maybe some positive sentiment from the euro um, and uh, maybe some negative sentiment and some profit taking from the dollar, this is going to be, you know, the best area to look for buy trades here. If you're now looking for a short trade, I think the next short trade at the moment is going to be around this supply zone. I really should be drawing it from here, from that supply zone before looking to get short. 
unless prices obviously start to create lower highs, lower lows, and then we'd be waiting for um, you know that lower high created um, supply zone, and then look to get short. But um, uh, yeah, I think that's that's it pretty much for the euro dollar. Um, looking at the euro yen. In fact, I should be going on to here. So the Euro Yen this week, again, um, risk off prices, you know, have sold off a little bit down into this um, this level of support within demand. Um, I personally expect prices to probably start to still start to fall away again as uh, the Yen will end up um, potentially strengthening due to risk off against the euro currency so going to the euro yen um if you're looking at getting in short and i'm going to move this down probably to around here and then what you'd be looking for is any kind of pullbacks into supply zones you know in a lower time frame let me just delete these so you'd be looking at a move up into here before looking at short trades or up into here if prices start to come go lower then you're looking at this newly created supply zone proof of value and then prices so should be there should be here and then you'd be looking at short trades from around that supply zone um, but again, with uh, the European elections coming up, just be careful because potentially a lot of volatility coming into the markets. Um, moving on to the Aussie dollar. Again, the Aussie dollar. Um, Australia, uh, Reserve Bank Australia being dovish. The, uh, and the Australia and the uh, US dollar being the uh, stronger of the two. You can start to see where prices have definitely fallen away. Um, again, looking at looking at potentially trying to get short on this but prices just didn't come up to that level so going to the charts we can start to kind of drag this down a little bit and what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably put it around where the low is right there delete that level there and then look for there and again the reason why I'm doing it really here is because um, it's just simply because to have the demand zone where I normally draw them was from here is really too much of a wider zone and it was you know prices really have proved that there's really no demand there not enough demand there but we don't know whether there's demand here I wouldn't normally draw demand zone here but for illustration purposes this is where I'm gonna um, you know draw it and have it from here we can see that we've had a bit of support here as well so if you are looking to buy the Australian dollar you'd be looking at any putty time from now probably preferably into that before there if you're looking to take advantage of maybe some profit taking and hopefully prices can get back up to this level then you'd be looking at you know short trades from around this supply zone you also have an area of support turned resistance so that adds to the supply and demand equation within this area so you'll be looking at potential short trades from the underside of that if prices do start to pull back prices don't go down forever prices definitely will pull back at some point and finally the Australian dollar Japanese yen and again last week risk off prices have really sold off from this area creating some supply zones and uh, if we go to Aussie yen again we'll just uh, bring this demand zone down to where we're at probably now maybe get rid of that one and maybe start to just add some supply zones as we've made lower highs lower lows right there so what you're now looking at is pullbacks into any of these types of supply zones if you think that risk is going to be on and the Japanese yen is going to strengthen if you're looking at potential risk on and there was Australian elections matter of fact over the weekend as well um, so that could have a positive um, 
positive uh, sentiment on you know the Australian dollar so you could see from pretty much from now uh, prices start to turn around right um, but for me fundamentally there are you know better trades out there um, so potentially I'll probably maybe steer clear I will steer clear of this currency pair but again great opportunity for any long trades if uh, if you get some positive sentiment on the Sunday open so uh, that brings us to the end of the uh, the uh, analysis for this week um, thank you for staying this long if you have and um, I do wish you all a great trading week please don't forget to like subscribe share comment as well and I'll try and get back to you as soon as possible and I uh, hope you have all have a great trading week take care